like if you think you're suffering being in quarantine in your house for a few days, imagine what it's like being a sow, a mother sow in a farrowing crate with all the dead piglets, piglets around her smelling like feces all day. Horrible in a prison where you can't even turn around. <laughs> Alright, so for you, all you guys in Instagram world, I'm doing my podcast on Instagram Live today and I'm recording it right now. We've got a camera here, we've got the podcast set up. I'm on a beanbag here. I've got my little picture that I've, a very, very uh, nice subscriber painted for me. Thank you so much. So welcome to this episode of the Carb Strong Cast. We've got a surprise for the Instagram audience here. We're live streaming. We're going to talk about the current affairs today. Um, so like what we're all doing about the current situation, what we think of it. Um, there's a lot of different theories floating around. We can just we can just discuss that. Um, but yeah, like obviously I'm spending a, a little bit more time indoors. I was going to have a guest on this week, but I thought I don't really want to travel at the moment. Um until we know a little bit more about what's going on. So I'm being, you know, responsible. Uh, it's a little bit hard not to take this seriously right now. So that's why I am, you know, taking my precautions. But, you know, I've got the beanbag set up. I've got the camera set up here ready to to chat away about what's going on. And for all you guys at home who are listening to this, um, yeah, like, obviously... I am not an expert on anything about what's going on. I don't think we should claim to be experts right now about, you know, viruses and, you know, there's a lot of theories that have been thrown around and everything like that. I've seen the images from Italy. It looks really bad. It looks scary. And I'm not about to test whether or not this is a hoax or not <laughs> because uh, those look like real dead people. They look like real nurses suffering. Um, they look like intensive care units filled up with people. And 30 and 40 year olds are getting this, uh, ended up in critical care as well from this. Is, so I don't think it's something we should take lightly. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to throw it back and forward to, you know, all you guys in the live stream here. Everyone's saying, yeah, it's real. Um, it's not a, you know, it's serious. Um, so happy to be vegan right now. The sad thing is, I don't think being vegan is going to necessarily help that much, like with this type of thing. Like as much as I would like to say it does, I just don't think it will necessarily like stop you from catching viruses because I still get the flu and I'm a vegan and I've been vegan for six or nearly seven years and I eat predominantly healthy whole foods and I still get the flu. Uh, so I think there's some things that vegan veganism just can't help. Uh, veganism is a moral principle anyway, but let's just talk about plant-based nutrition. Obviously, boosting your immune system is going to make you less receptive to viruses, or, or at least at least the symptoms of the virus won't be so bad. I mean, it just makes sense, doesn't it? I'm not a doctor or a nutritionist, but if you boost your immunity, obviously you're going to do better with, than someone who's older, whose immune system has started to slowly get weaker, um, someone who's got underlying health conditions, that just makes sense to me. Not a doctor, just makes sense. Um, someone says, in this case, veganism won't help for sure. Uh, obviously, like, this is, veganism is a moral philosophy. So, like, it's about anti-animal abuse, basically what veganism is inherently. Um, but when we're talking about plant-based nutrition, that's a different topic, obviously. That's uh, something about, you know, boosting your health in times like this. I don't think it's a bad idea to look after your nutrition at times like this, but I'm going to say this. I went to the supermarket the other day. No one was wearing face masks. I was the only one wearing gloves. I was a little bit like, what are you guys doing here? Like, what are you doing? Wear some gloves or something. Cover your face up. So um, I don't know like what you guys are doing, but I got some, I got some, um, what are they? F, F45 masks, F95 masks or something. I got a couple of them, and I'm just going to cover my face when I go into the supermarket. Um, and I wear gloves. I've got some gloves to to wear, um, you know. And I've got some, you know, uh, what are they? Some cloths and you know. Apparently, soap is the best thing to use to wash your hands. But I'm just keeping clean. I'm just keeping clean because you don't know what someone's carrying and carrying around. I'm not. I don't know if I'm being paranoid, but I'm just taking this 
this seriously. Like, as ser- look, look, personally, I'm not going to test it out. Anyone struggling to get vegan food in the shops? Some vegan food. Yeah. Like, stuff that I usually eat, like beans and brown rice, which no one usually... Look, it's usually... Everyone's skipping the bean aisle, usually. Now, beans... Like, to get some baked beans, you got to do an armed hold-up. What's going on there? No one's bloody doing armed hold-ups for baked beans. But anyways, um... I haven't, we were, we haven't necessarily been panic buying, like just going crazy. But one thing we couldn't get was toilet paper, which is pretty crazy. So we just got some, um, recycled, like, like recycled paper hand towels. I'm not really fussy, to be honest. I actually think they're, they're better. They're sturdier. Um, and to be honest, like eating such a high fiber diet, there's not much to wipe anyway. Sorry to be graphic there, but, (laughs) um, you know. Let's be honest here. We we aren't, vegans poo out flowers. That's how that's how we are. No, only joking. So uh, meat selling out is depressing me. Yeah, yeah. Like people are stocking up on flesh to stick in their freezer. Uh, they're turning their freezers into a morgue, um, which is horrible. I, I don't know how you can see all those dead bodies overseas and stuff and just eat a dead body. Like horrific. Um, let's just see if we can get something up. Uh, look at this. Two days ago, 500 dead in one day in Italy. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy. One part Lombardi in Italy, Lombardi. You guys, if you haven't seen this, right, you got to check out what's going on in Italy, man. It is horrible. They can't. They have to choose who lives and who dies. It's 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 really horrific. Um. Uh. They 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 got to select who they put in the critical care. They they they. They're really like they're doing it really hard over there. They just don't have enough beds, and they're they're filling up the the morgues. So they're using these big army trucks. I don't know if you've seen images of this. They're using big army trucks to drive the the coffins full of people uh, to the morgue. And um, let me just put in army trucks. And what they're doing um, is they're making so family members can't even go to the funeral. Because everyone's quarantined. So that is horrible. And that's scary. That's scary for me. Like, you know, imagine, like, just imagine that being, um, you know, family member dying of coronavirus and you not even be a- being allowed to be with them before they die, right? And follow them to the funeral, have a funeral, see them off. You have to stay in quarantine and suffer with mourning. My father died and it was horrible. And I'm so glad that we were next to his bed, his bed, uh, but right, right at the moment he died. That's something that stays with you. It's a, it's a really horrible, horrible, uh, situation that can traumatize you for life. Let's just have a look here. Look at this. Have you seen these images? You know what that is? Have you seen this guys? They're army trucks full of dead bodies. That's army trucks full of dead bodies. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? That is, that to me is like, and, and you know, Italy, like I'm in the UK right now. Um, Italy's not far away. Italy's an hour flight from here. UK has 66 million people on the same sized uh, country. Same size country, more people. So it could easily happen here. Like, I don't know why people aren't taking it seriously, what happened in Italy. They, they, their death count is higher than China. They had 30,000 infected, 2,500. I think they got 2,500, 3,000 3, dead now. Don't, don't quote me here. But they're, they're like, they've 3,500, they've overlapped China with their death right now. So something went on there with the contagion, just everyone just getting infected. So yeah, like, like to me, I like, this is why I'm taking this seriously. Like I think what happened in Italy, like, again, not a virus expert. Don't quote me on all of this stuff. Look, I'm just a person with an opinion. Um, but I don't think they knew about it while it was spreading and it was just spreading invisibly. And because of the density of the people over there, just do, 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 before the numbers started showing what was happening it was already too late. Like that's what, that's what I gather. So like, that's why they're, they're making people quarantine 
just to stop something before it starts because the numbers might not re be reflecting what is actually happening right now. So the death count starts happening after it's too late. You know, so I guess it's precautions. Well, someone works at the UK crematorium and we're soon likely to bury without family present or even cremate only. That's, that's really, really sad. So everyone who's actually listening on the podcast, I'm doing an Instagram live too and we're taking comments and stuff from people at the same time um, while we're doing this podcast here. Look, like we can start talking... Look, let's just talk about the precautions I'm taking right now um, so you guys know. For you guys on YouTube and in the podcast and then here on Instagram, I'm actually um, not doing any face-to-face -face activism right now. Uh, but which is fine because I done a ton in Australia. Um, I done we done two to three weeks in Australia activism, and I've got loads of activism to to work with here to upload on social media. I've got plenty of work to do. Um, that's the nature of my job. So if you see me out there doing cubes and stuff, I'm not actually doing them now. I have done them. I've already done that work, and now I've got to go. I do my other side of the work, which is presenting social media, you know what I mean? So I'm not being irresponsible at this time, you know what I mean? So I just want you guys to know that, like, like if you see me out there doing stuff, I'm not saying to you, go and do a bunch of cubes, expose yourself to thousands of people. That's not, no, no, no. From AV have put out a statement saying that they're stopping cubes for the time being, which I think is a responsible thing to do. We don't want to put anyone at risk here. Uh, we're taking it seriously. So I think you should too, like... Um, it's just not worth testing it out to see, you know, oh, maybe the government, you know, maybe the government are blowing this out of proportion. They're bringing in the draconian measures. They're, they're, it's a bit, a bit of a conspiracy. They're using the coronavirus to impose new laws and to control the population and all of these things I'm hearing. I don't want to test it out. Those look like real dead people in Italy, you know, and um, yeah, I just think it's important that, look, look. Take the precautions you need to, right, and wait it out. Um, don't go out there spreading, you know, yourself around to different crowds of people just yet. Just take it easy. Keep your hands clean. Um, you know, glove up. And I'm, I've got a little mask to go in a supermarket with because I felt weird in there the other day. I was like, look at all these people panic buying. There's more people in the supermarket than ever before, right? They're quarantining everyone but letting hundreds and hundreds of people into the supermarket at once. Like... The supermarket's where it's going down, if anything. So I'm bloody disinfecting everything that I bring out of the supermarket. Um, you know, just wiping stuff down and, and that. Um, and yeah, yeah, just like leaving the shoes at the door so I'm not walking anything in because people spit on the floor and stuff like that. Um, yeah, like, I used to be into all the conspiracy theories and stuff as well. Like, I, you know, like, I keep an open mind. To just just to let you guys know, I keep an open mind, um, but I don't deny the science and the experts because I think that's a mistake um, as well. You know what I mean? So if the experts are saying something and they're saying you got to be careful of this, this can get out of control, I think, you know, we have to take that seriously. Now... Let's take. Let's see what you guys are saying about this in the comments here. Will you be drawing any attention to the fact that COVID has actually started because of eating am animals as well as other epidemics? Yeah, yeah, we should do. Um, like these crazy viruses, <laughs> like they all trace back to like crowded animal farms, you know, um, or markets where they're slaughtering animals on top of each other. And you know what they were saying is that, again, not a disease specialist. Okay, just a someone who's has an opinion and is it's well let's look at bird flu that's obvious bird flu you don't need to be a scientist to work out where that one came from swine flu don't need again don't need to be a scientist to work out where swine flu came from um this is pretty obvious stuff um but they're saying like the wuhan markets like they've got this wild animal trade and they're breeding these wild animals um like just all different types of creatures from all parts of the world, right? Creatures that would otherwise never make contact with each other. A bat, a pangolin, a human, 
all in the same place where they're cutting ducks' heads off. They're putting birds in cages on top of these animals. The shit from these birds, they're terrified. They're, these animals are terrified. They're, they're cutting off their heads in front of them. They're probably boiling a few dogs around the corner as well. They're sick, cruel human beings. What can I say? And there's blood and there's feces and there's different species of wild animals, all from their, their natural environment, bringing all these diseases together. So, so, like, doesn't it make sense that the only place where all these weird species, different species of animals, like weird as in, like, just random, I, I, that's what I mean by weird, random species of animals are all together in one place, doesn't that make sense that this is where these contagions can jump from one species to another? Like, where else are you going to get a bat, a pangolin, and a human in the same spot? You know, other than these... these these wildlife markets. That if you've seen these wildlife markets, you got to see this shit. Let's just check out Wu Wuhan market. Uh, let's just have a look. Wild animals. Um, let's just see if this comes up. Ah, oh, like coronavirus, and it, it's coming up with coronavirus stuff. Um, like there, there. Look at these. Like there's dogs everywhere as well. I don't know if the. Uh, just viewer discretion, but there's dogs in cages. Um, they're just walking past. They're all on the floor. Um, look at them. All these dogs. Horrible. Like, look how many people. Oh, wait. These are dogs. We have market dogs. Um, but they eat anything that bloody walks and swims and just anything that moves, you know? Not that we're any better than the West. Um, it's just that they don't have a discrepancy between species, um, over there. Like, you know, over here, we're like, oh, we only eat chickens and fish and pigs and lambs and pheasants. Over in China, they eat pangolins and bats. Well, they're flying animals, just like a bird's a flying animal. Or, or, or we don't really eat flying birds, do we? But, oh yeah, yeah. Um, pheasants and wild animals that people shoot over here, they shoot deer. Um, they eat all types of wild um, birds over here in the UK too, hunters do. Um, you know, these are just, it might seem out there to you, oh, Wuhan market with snakes. Um, they Yeah, so snakes are there too. Um, uh, turtles, turtles as well. Um, this is a really interesting video here, um, which was uh, by, by Vox. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this video, but it's, it's called How... How the how the wildlife trade is linked to coronavirus? Earthling Ed shared this the other day. Um, you you should check that out too. But anyway, if you haven't seen that, check it out because that's uh like this is a stuff that's not that it's actually not stuff that's on the menu, but they chop it up into you know meat. But this these are the sentient beings that are on the menu here. So on the top here, this looks like this is a peacock. This is a pe this is a peacock. Like, sorry, you guys can't see there on the, on the live stream, but that's a peacock. Um, there's a cow, an eel, a camel, snake, fox. They're eating foxes. They're eating foxes. Uh, rabbits, dogs, goats, turtles. This is a turtle. Uh, this is a menu, Wuhan Market. This is how they're selling it. This is snakes, you know, just... Dead animals all on top of each other. They were saying how um, at one stage there was a famine and they had to start eating wild animals. And then what ended up happening is they started, uh, the government allowed people to start, you know, breeding wild animals from home to sell to eat. Um, so that's where this wildlife farming industry come from. And then, and, that, and then it started off with this illegal wild animal trade. Uh, so they're selling like wild animals and you know like even tigers and rhinos and just pang these pangolins look so adorable i don't know how they can torture and kill them but if you go to the end of the video it sort of it it discusses how you know how these viruses spread from one species to another it's when you create an environment where they're all together <laughs> uh, it makes sense and like so when people are saying oh you know this is a human created bio weapon. Well, you could argue it's human 
created <laughs> because we are creating the environment um, that sort of makes this happen. Yeah, and, and we're, we're creating the environment for which it can spread. But to say that it was created in a lab and deliberately let, um, let out, like, I don't know. Why he, well, it's a possibility. Like, I'm not ruling it out. It could have could have happened, but can't, don't we? We've have enough evidence to show that um, these viruses are coming from animals to begin with, because because we've got bird flu and swine flu and different types of coronaviruses that already exist that have already come from animals, from you know. And where in nature, you know, where in nature are you going to get this type of mass breeding? You know, why do you think they're pumping pigs full of anti antibiotics? Why do you think they're pumping chickens full of antibiotics? Because they've got to stop them from getting sick because they're in these closed quarters living in their own shit and piss all day. Suffering. You know? That's why. That's why they've got to pump them full of antibiotics so they don't get sick. And also the antibiotics apparently help them grow quicker. But this is just not a natural circumstance to put animals in. You know? So shit's going to go down in there. Shit's going to go down in there. Um, it just makes sense. Mad cow disease is another one. Good, good call. Um... You know, mad cow disease is another one. Ebola. I think that's from eating bats or, or come from bats. Or Look, again, I'm not a virus expert, but um, there's inf there's enough information out there about these viruses stemming from, you know, our use of animals. And, you know, you could just argue like... Someone here says karma. Yeah, you could argue it's karma. You could argue that. Like, look at the torture and the abuse that's going on um, in these factory farm hell holes these markets like dogs being boiled alive and bats having their wings cut off and you know it's just animals being skinned alive they don't give a shit about animals like they don't give a shit about these animals in those markets like oh and you know come over the west we're all bloody hypocrites over here too you know just different species just different species so yeah, that's some truth bombs about the the animal issue, you know. Um, but wherever you think this came from, like, you might be thinking it was some bioweapon, which is no real evidence for them. I don't know what evidence you have of that. There's more evidence to suggest it actually come from these crowded markets uh, because things have, like, of that nature have happened before. Wherever you think it come from, the fact is it exists now. <laughs> So, you should still be taking precautions because um, it exists. I mean, if, unless you're one of those people who are denying that it even exists, then I'm going to say that's pretty crazy because the, the, burden of, the burden of proof is on you. There's evidence enough that people are dying from it. Um, you know, there's a story of a woman in here in the UK who lost her husband to it. Um, you know the burden of proof is on you to prove that this is completely fabricated by the media, which is like, you could basically say everything's fabricated. Everything like, you know, how are you supposed to know anything's real? Like you weren't, if you weren't there, um, which I think, think that's like a really silly sort of way to view the world. Um, I, I'm not suggesting that, you know, it could be a possibility that the government are overcapitalizing on this situation for some reason. Maybe someone's benefiting from this situation. I don't know. Maybe you could look into who's benefiting from all these lockdowns and the stock markets crashing temporarily where they can buy a bunch of stock and resell them. I don't know. I don't know. Could that be a thing? Who knows? We're just speculating here. But um, someone's getting... Oh, God. There's a few animal abusers in the comment section, which isn't, isn't a... Um, surprise to me i'm just flicking through the comments as we're talking guys yeah anyway we're just speculating but like i think we should go with the most logical you know, like the most rational evidence-based thing here which is that this is a virus that started from these markets where dead animals live animals different species of animals with different contagions are all kept in the same spot fed to human beings you know, and in a place like China, where there's a high density of population, where these things can easily spread, and people coming through and to and from airports, and you know the contagion spreading across the world through airports, and ending up in each country, one one person in each country. Only one person has to have this in a country for it to multiply and spread over time, um, and that makes sense. That makes sense to me, 
And until you prove otherwise to me that I'm going to take the precautions that we need to, you know, and to be honest, I don't socialize much anyway that that's, you know, unless I'm out there doing activism um, or going to the gym, which I haven't been doing, by the way, I don't go to the gym now. Um, I might just, I'm just doing some stuff at home um, and I've got a lot of work to do anyway. So yeah. It's not a really big deal for me to be not out in public, but I understand those who might be suffering a little bit because you might have to be home with annoying family members. You might be a vegan in a household with people eating bacon all day. That can be hard, tough too. Um, uh, you, you, you might not, I don't know, you might not have the, the best living circumstances. Uh, that might be tough as well. So uh, my heart goes out to all of you, anyone who's affected by it. You might have lost your job. You might not get, ne you might not know where your next money's coming from. That will be hard, hard as well. Like God, pe people in that, that situation, that must be tough. Um, so yeah, I've been ringing family to make sure they're okay. And if anything happens, like, and you know, my mum can't go to work. That's going to be tough, you know. Like, so my heart goes out to those families who are living just on their paycheck, and that paycheck has been taken away. But the government here in the UK is going to help out, but. What if you're from a country where the government ain't going to help out? Like I was just looking at scenes from Syria where all these, you know, they're living in absolute squalor, poverty, pure poverty, and it's dense populated and they're worried about the coronavirus. Like this coronavirus thing, it's going all over the bloody world. It's like, it's going all over the world. Like even in Syria, they're worried about the coronavirus. Like no one has not, who, everyone has been exposed to this coronavirus fear um worldwide worldwide which is kind of kind of it's it's it's, it's really what's the word mind-blowing it's actually mind-blowing um you know maybe i'll just bring this a little bit closer to me see this is uh hey guys you're all on youtube there um i've got my phone in my hand so, yeah, this is mind-blowing. Um, someone says, my dad eats meat all day and I'm trapped in a house with him. Oh, Gabriel, totally know how that feels. Um, yeah, I used to live with my dad when he first developed, He, my dad developed autoimmune diseases and he was eating just bacon and cheese all day at doctor's orders, of course, because he needed to put on weight. And it was a tough thing, super tough thing, knowing about the animal cruelty and, you know, knowing a little bit about health and, you know, uh, you know, that, that type of, you know, environment to be in when you're, you're a little bit aware of what's happening it can be so tough, so tough. You're going to have to find the Zen place to, to, to live in that situation. Um, wisely, I would say, uh, you're going to have to be a little bit wise about how you tackle this issue here or your living situation is going to be real tough real quick. So I just, uh, I would just advise that you tread carefully with how you approach this topic. If you're in f home with family members who eat meat and dairy and you're morally against that and it eats you up inside, um, I don't know if creating a big war at home right now is the best thing for you to do. Um... Yeah, just going to say that. If you can find some type of separate little mini fridge, if you've got that type of money put away, 100 bucks or something, get a mini fridge, secondhand gum tree mini fridge, get your own little mini fridge, put your own food in there. I don't know. That, that'll try to separate yourself from the flesh. Um, find a little retreat where you can watch Joey Carbstrong videos and separate yourself. Um Maybe your family might be bored and want to watch Dominion with you. <laughs> or they might be bored enough to watch vegan documentaries, even though vegan documentaries are epic. Um, yeah, this might be a good time for that. You know, let's all sit down together in quarantine and see how your food is made. Dad, let's see how your steak is made. Let's see who's, whose poor innocent body your steak was torn from. So... Let's keep flicking through these comments. Uh, we're not taking troll comments today. Sorry, trolls. Uh, Joey, I love you and thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, 
I turned my friend vegan within one week of being friends with her. Well, you're a beast. Very good. Very good work. Um, let's keep f flowing through. Uh, who wants to jump on the stream with me? Someone can jump on. If someone wants to tell me how they're... Like, look, who wants to jump on? Um, vegan wants to jump on and tell me about how they're dealing with the quarantine stuff. I don't think UK is officially being quarantined like other countries where you literally can't go out. It's illegal. Um, the government just advised people to stay home and not to socially mix together to, to distance and to keep clean. And yeah, this is just advice for now, I think. But pubs and clubs and bars and all that have stopped here. Uh, they shut last night. They won't be reopening. Uh, recreation theatres have all shut here in the UK. Um, if you guys want to jump on, jump on. You, I think you click those two little faces. Go live with. I love this video where you said to the guy, you're an invasive species. Well, he is. And so am I. If you want to use the logic like, deer are an invasive species, so we, so we should cull them because they're bad for the environment. Have a look in the mirror. Have a long, hard look in the mirror. Human beings are the most putrid, parasitic species to the environment the world has ever seen. Now, is my, is my, um, but I, I love humans as well, but let's face it, let's be honest with ourselves here, we destroy everything we get our hands on. Now that we've been quarantined, look at the earth, there's dolphins swimming in the bloody Venice River. Is that a river in Venice? Is that what I've seen? Let's have a look. I want to show you, uh, is it Venice? Venice, I'm, I'm just typing it into my computer now. Venice dolphins coronavirus? What? Dolphins and fish are loving life. Look at this. Wait, what's going on here? Like, let's have a look. Look at the streams. The streams running clear in Venice. The fish. These are little fishies swimming in here. The fish are coming back. They're having a party. They're like those bloody human beings. Fish are having a party. That's what's going on. Oh, look. Look at this. Oh, Oh, Danny the Dolphin. Oh, it would be Daniello because it's a... Uh, Daniello because it's an Italy. Italian Dolphin. See? He's he's loving it. They're, they're like, look, humans are... Humans have been naughty. So they're in their rooms. You know? The streams are clearing up. Imagine what's happening to the... um, To the atmosphere right now. Global warming and that. <laughs> That ain't happening right now, is it? Global warming ain't happening right now, is it? Oh, Dania Dan Daniello, the dolphin, have come back to Venice River to to have a little swims. Um, what we got here? Who's who's coming on the stream? Someone, if you guys want to come on the stream, um, request to jump on the screen. We're gonna go with you. Let's try our luck. See if he's uh. And a Figaro. Anyone from Italy? Is there anyone in the in the chat from Italy, right now? Hey, yes, there we go. Yo. Hi, Joey. How you going, mate? You you're, you're on the stream. Good. I love you so much. I've been to all the vegan festivals on Adelaide in Adelaide. I've got pictures with you. I've shook your hand. Oh, sick. Yes, my name's Ander. I <laughs> I yeah, I've been vegan for almost two years with my friend Henry. Do you remember us? Like even just our faces. Uh, I won't take offense. I won't take offense. Uh, I, I don't remember you. I'm really sorry. But, but yeah. That's okay. No worries. Um, but, good to see you again. You, where are you? Where, you're in Australia. Are you in, are you in Adelaide? Yeah. yeah. So no quarantine yet, but um, things are getting worse by the minute. Like uh, school shutting down, things like that. Your school shutting down. What are you, what are you going to do? Are you going to keep clean and it's study from home or what? Um, I think that's the idea, but um, I, I, I don't really think students will just keep up with the work to be fair but yeah. um they've said two weeks shut down then open it back up again but we all know the virus is caused f from just eating animals in the first place yeah we were talking about the wuhan market and um how they how there's nowhere like like these markets where all these different species of animals are together and these viruses can just jump around and you know mutate from one species to another and yeah but oh, I've been such a big fan for so long. Like I've learned all the, I've done activism in the city as well for Anonymous for the Voiceless. Oh, good work. Um, I've got my shirts, everything. Like I love it so much. 
Excellent work, guys. And how are you going getting your vegan food? What's the supermarkets look like? No toilet paper? Mm, oh, it's got it's gotten better. Um, I know Oporto's now has um, a vegan burger. Because of Corona. Sorry? Because of Corona. Oh, you mean about Corona? Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, like, you've got enough food, you've got enough toilet paper, because I was struggling. I think, I think food in general um, is... Uh, yeah, oat is milk. holding up oat milk and soy milk is fine because no one is willing like not many people drink it so like that's like easy to stock up on but like uh, but like heaps of people like like yeah heaps yeah. of people start drinking it though because of the coronavirus which is good because it's got a long shelf life yeah because they can't get their breast milk so they'll just you know it takes something like the coronavirus for people to even start thinking about getting the plant-based milk which is crazy like they haven't tried it so they don't know how nice it is like soy milk i love it it's nice and sweet yeah <laughs> Well, you know what? Like, I hope that that all they have left is vegan food. They don't shut down. I hope they shut down the slaughterhouses and you know stop breeding these animals. Yeah, no, I know. Um, I know toilet papers. We're almost out of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. not too sure where to find it really, but yeah, as I said, we we're, we're not in shutdown yet, and all the meat, all the meat's gone. Yeah, they bought all the meat, put it in their freezer. Ah, uh, well, well, you guys be good, right? Stay vegan, and uh, we'll. We'll speak again soon, mate. No worries. Thank you so much. Peace, brother. Yeah. Easy. Bye-bye. See ya. Well, there we go. That's from Australia there. People, you know, Australia hasn't really been hit that hard yet, but the, the government are still taking massive steps over there. I've seen images where, like, everything's gone in the supermarket except for the vegan section. It's like, what? Like, come on. Like, what does it take for you guys to try a piece of tofu? Try a piece of tofu. God. <sighs> Anyways, shut down the slaughterhouses, you know, you're not shutting down, you're shutting down the bloody pubs, restaurants and bars and you're not shutting down the factory farms though, are you? You know, shut down the factory farms. That's what we want to see. Disgusting, putrid, disease-ridden hellholes they are. Pure animal slaves and they're suffering constantly. Like... Like, if you think you're suffering being in quarantine in your house for a few days, imagine what it's like being a pig sow, a mother sow in a farrowing crate with all the dead piglets, piglets around her smelling like feces all day. Horrible. In a prison where you can't even turn around. I've been in those farrowing sheds, a hellhole, prisons, disgusting. I've actually been in prison too. Um, I've been in, I spent six months in... Uh, prison. I was in maximum security for four months and then two months in medium security. I spent uh, five days in, uh, so what's it called? It's like a, when you go to prison and you get punished, you go to a different unit. Um, so they isolate you from the other prisoners and you're on 23 hour lockdown and they take all your freedoms away from you and they put you in like a smock, like a, like a potato sack and you don't have TV. And it was horrible. It was horrible when I was in there. Um, it's like isolation. Um, it's okay. Siri, Siri's, Siri just started jumping in on the podcast. So, yeah, solitary confinement. That's what Laura was saying. Yeah, so I was in solitary for five days. And that was my first experience with prison. Horrible, horrible um, experience. Uh, but, you know, live and learn, don't we? We live and learn. But it did make me value my freedom being in prison. And I hope this makes everyone at home who's stuck at home think of what it's like to be stuck in a horrible circumstance like those animals that are stuck in cages in factory farm farrowing crates and gestation crates and you know forced down a kill floor in fear suffering about to be murdered think about all that it ain't no fun when you're the victim is it look at it from the victim's perspective um was I a vegan in prison? No, I wasn't. But um, when I was on Home D, I, I started following this guy called Dan McDonald, the Life Regenerator. On YouTube, he's raw foodist guy. I wouldn't technically call him a philosophical vegan. He's more of a raw foodist, a health practitioner. Um, so I was getting into the fruits and veggies. So when I was in prison, I was eating predominantly fruits and vegetables. Like when you're in maximum security... You can't choose what you eat. You eat what they tell you. <laughs> so you get a small thing of whatever slop they give you. But when you move into medium security prison, you have the opportunity to buy 
commissary and you know they have fresh fruits and vegetables there so i was eating fresh fruits and vegetables i was eating chicken breast because i thought i needed protein and i was eating skim milk powder because i thought i needed protein and um i thought i needed well you do need protein but not from corpses obviously so yeah i was predominantly eating plants in prison people used to give me shit like pay me out make fun of me in the unit because i was eating raw cabbage and raw vegetables all day <laughs> yeah but anyways, I uh, wasn't a vegan then. When I, I went vegan when I got out of prison. But, yeah, look, hey, Joey, just wanted to say, I really appreciate what you do. I wouldn't be able to sit there and, and listen to the pe these people say what they do to animals is right or funny, but you handle it great. Yeah, I know, it's it's it can be difficult. The most difficult part is listening to the conversation again and again when you're editing it. That's the difficult part. Adding the captions to the bottom of the videos, listening to the conversation over and over again, working out what to cut out of it how to make it into a video, listening to the same excuses over and over and over and over again. After you've already had the conversation, you've left, you've gone home and you listen to it again. That's what's difficult and that's what can wear you down a bit. So who, who is anyone in the stream right now, the Insta stream from Italy? It's these scenes from Italy, horrible what these uh, nurses are going for, through. to save lives in the Italian hospital at the epicenter of the deadliest coronavirus outbreak in the world. And this is just the emergency ward, not the intensive care unit. The ICU is already overwhelmed. The ICU overwhelmed. Those plastic bubble helmets are connected to ventilators to help the gasping patients breathe. Horrible. Intensive care. This hospital is one of the most advanced in Europe, but the victims are everywhere. On gurneys, in waiting rooms, in hallways. It's a very severe pneumonia. Every day, 50 to 60 patients who come to our emergency department. Severe pneumonia. They say they want the rest of the world to know that this is what's waiting for them if nations don't lock down. Yeah. Feel so stressed in my life. Oh. I think our best, but maybe it's not. It's not enough. Thousands of volunteer student doctors in Italy are being rushed to the region. Horrible. And an American relief group has airlifted. And they're they're like they're disinfecting the whole streets and and everything. Like they're like three and a half thousand people in a couple of weeks. Boom, dead. That's hectic. Like if that was like a terrorist attack. The world would be in emergency. Well, it is an emergency now, right now. But, like, that's like, I don't know. That's, it's, because what what was making me trip out, like, a little bit, like, I don't know if you feel the same, is that two weeks ago or 10 days ago in Italy, they had the same death count as we have in the UK right now. So we haven't even, we haven't caught up yet. Like, day after day, they're getting another 500 deaths in the in Italy. So, what I was worried about is that we haven't seen, you know, really what's going to happen. Or if we're not careful, that could happen. Um, so, yeah. And then, like, seeing scenes of 30 and 40-year-olds in critical condition as well. Like, that means that, you know, not just the elderly are at risk. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot more deadly than influenza, even though, though more people die of the flu. I think more people, obviously, the flu's had a longer time to spread, more people have it, and it's mostly elderly that the flu gets, but this is more deadly on average, this this disease is more deadly on average. I think they were saying it's like 30 to 40 times um, more likely to kill you than the flu, if you get it, like, so that's, um. but again, there are other diseases that more people are dying from, and, you know, some people could say, like, there are other epidemic diseases that more people died from and they didn't make as much of a bigger deal as this one. Um, you know, but still, I would still be precautious because the experts might see something we don't see. You know, they might not have be releasing all the information or there's the other side of it too where they're overcapitalizing on this um, for some, you know, sinister reason. But I don't know. So they're all, we're all speculating but I think we should just take the most rational um, precaution, which is just the advice of the experts and just try to socially distance and keep clean. So, yeah, emphysema. Apparently, the, the, the virus has three stages. Again, not a doctor, not a virus expert, but apparently there's three stages, and the last stage is a pneumonia. And apparently, it's your body trying to get rid of the disease, and it puts you into pneumonia. Again, 
that was not expert at all, was it? Because I don't really know what I'm talking about when it comes to diseases, but that's just what I've heard. Um, but luckily, you know, we don't have to be an expert to talk, you know, with our audiences as long as we're not giving someone dangerous advice, you know, acting like an expert on coronavirus when you're not, you know, and you're going, hey, everything's fine, everything's fine. Like, or you're going, you're all going to die. Like, I don't think they're, they're too extremes. Like, everything's fine or you're all going to die. I think they're just too extremes. But I just think having a balanced, you know, thought process about this is healthy. You know, it could be a conspiracy. It might not be as bad as you think. It could be really bad. It looks horrible in Italy. So, like, let's just take in all the information and have, like, just take rational precautions at the moment. Some precautions, you're not going to even have a choice. Government are going to go all draconian on you and just be like, lockdown, quarantine, it's illegal to go to the gym, you know, blah, 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 blah. You're not going to have a choice. So this is going to affect you whether you believe it's true, whether you don't believe it's true. I believe it's true. Um, I do think the media are having a bloody party right now. They're, the media are having a party. Have you seen them? They are going, they're going cray. The, the media are like... Oh, they're, they're like, we've got content for weeks. Like this Channel 4 channel on, um, this Channel 4 channel on YouTube, they're cranking out four episodes of bloody hour, like fully edited, like episodes of different talks and people coming through and it's, it's crazy. Like they are loving it. The, the media, I don't know whether they're loving it, like in quotations, loving it, but they're definitely liking the fact that they have a lot to report on and people are watching because they're really worried. So I don't know whether the media are like lapping up the fact that everyone's coming to their pages to see their advertising and get through to the, you know, like, so, you know, maybe the, the media do what they do best. Why wouldn't they be like, like, let's just think about this. The media love to sensationalize at the best of times. What makes you think they're not doing a bit of sensationalizing right now? They are, like, they love to sensationalize the media. That's what they do. That's what media is. They take current events and they sensationalize them to get you to come, come to theirs. It's like clickbait. What you have to do on YouTube is you have to make your title enticing. Um, you have to make your thumbnail enticing because there's that much stuff on YouTube that people aren't just gonna, people aren't gonna click on your video, like me, I don't wanna go, Joey versus this person, like, make all these intense titles, but the fact is, if people don't see that title, they might not click, so, with the media, they have to sensationalize these stories a bit to get people to come to their channel, to their, their, uh, outlet over another's, don't they, over another outlet, so, to think right now that the media aren't sensational, say, sensationalizing a little bit would just be foolish, of course they are gonna be, of course they're going to be. Um, does that mean it's not serious? No. Does that mean some, you know, it just means that media do what they do. So, so I want people to have the most rational um, look at this as possible from all, all the information, okay? And I, I just hope you're not going too extreme one way and too extreme the other way. That's what I reckon. Like, let's just be about, balanced about this. It's not a complete hoax. Like, it. It's not not happening at all. Nothing to worry about at all. I think that that's a dangerous approach, and it's going to kill everyone. It's going to wipe off. It's this is the apocalypse. We're all going to die. I don't think that's a very helpful approach either. I just don't think that's rational either. Somewhere in the middle, okay. We can all safely say where it come from. Not one hundred percent, but we can be ninety percent. We can be eighty percent that because we've seen these coronaviruses come from animals before. Animals have these coronaviruses already in them. Um, so we can be set, but there's always that 20%. There's always a possibility they fabricated this, this disease. They, they manufactured this. There's a possibility. I'm not ruling it out completely because there's a possibility there's someone in the sky controlling everything as well. That's a possibility, not ruling it out. Um, so there are, there are things that, you know, I don't, I still keep a little bit of my mind open for so that I'm not completely ruling out other possibilities. But the most of me is like, this is a disease that jumped from animal to human um, and it's been spread across the world very easily, like it does through travel, because we we're, we're a globalized state. We can, boom, boom, boom. Does that make sense? A globalized state. The Earth is in a globalized state. It's globalization. Whatever we can travel from country to country and imports and exports, and people are packing f food and sending it from China over to Australia, over to 
you know, everyone's import export. People are import export all the time, crossing borders, and this, this is the freedom of movement. So diseases spread very rapidly. I mean, that makes sense to me. You could have one person fly through the Hong Kong airport over to New Zealand, and one person has a coronavirus over there. Talks to their friend at school, spits on a on the floor. Someone walks it in the house. Their kid gets it, gives it to the grandma. I don't know. That just makes sense to me how these things can spread across the world. So I don't know. I don't know. But maybe they are blowing it a little bit out of proportion. But like I said, I'm not taking those type of chances. Someone said if we were all vegan, this wouldn't have happened. Not not like this. Well, not not like this. I don't because these viruses jump from humans to animals. Um, um, do I think no viruses would exist if we didn't exploit animals? Not not well. Even influenza, let's, wait, didn't, influenza come from birds, didn't it? Inf, the, the common flu, wasn't it from duck farming? Like, don't, again, don't quote me, not a virus expert, not claiming to be one, I'm an animal rights activist. Um, but yeah, like, AIDS even, HIV, like, wasn't that something to do with, you know, eating monkeys or some, some exploitation of animals happening there? That's a theory. Again, I don't know, I'm just speculating, like, so don't get all, oh my god, Joey, you don't know what you're talking about. Again, I'm not claiming to know everything. I'm just just chatting with you guys. Um, but yeah, like I don't think like humans are filthy creatures as well. Like we 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 and you know some places are overpopulated. There's poverty in some places, and there's just a lot of germs and stuff. I'm not saying people that are in poverty are filthy. I'm just saying that even in the cities, like I lived in central London, there was just garbage everywhere. There was dirty needles on the floor. There is just people so congested in subways and rubbish and saliva and people vomiting from alcohol and alcohol is one of the biggest putrid diseases on earth right now it's disgusting what it does to people's in this like i'm not saying people like to have a couple of drinks but people they they overindulge they're suffering they're drinking alcohol it's destroying the, the communities it's really disgusting but yeah yeah like human beings in and of themselves uh we're not the cleanest animals especially when we're in cities and con congested uh that's for sure that's a certain certainty we can all state so even without the exploitation of animals there's probably still going to be stuff going around <laughs> you know but for the most part these epidemic pandemic diseases so far they're coming from animals <laughs> they're coming from animals um so yeah maybe we should stop exploiting them but it's coming back to bite the whole er earth on the bum and you know even no no one's safe from this stuff uh, so at the moment I'm in a small country town in England, so there's a small population here. Um, so I'm just, I'm actually answering a question someone said whereabouts in the UK. I'm obviously not going to give my whereabouts where I am, <laughs> but I'm in the UK, I'm in, in a smaller town. But still, I don't care how small the town is, I'm taking precautions. There was a town in Italy, um, that had 100,000 people in this town. It was one of the hardest places hit. 100,000 people, that's hardly no one, um, uh, that, I, I wonder if I can pull it up, just, uh, while we're in the chat, but it was one of the, 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 the worst places hit, and it only had, like, a hundred and, a hundred thousand, something thousand people there, so that just gives you an idea of how fast these viruses can spread in a small town, um, but there is, this theory that in Italy, because they generally live longer, I don't know whether it's Mediterranean, lots of pasta, vegetables, and, you know, plant foods. Apparently, they've got a, a larger proportion of elder, elderly there. So that could explain the high death count because the virus um, has a higher risk for the elderly, apparently. So not doctor, not Dr. Joey here, just guy who's has an opinion from what he's heard that you know this could be a they could have a higher death count over there because there's a higher population of elderly so that might be a thing but like you know just because you're in your 50s and 60s and 70s like mate when i'm in my 70s i'm i'm not i'm gonna be worried about this type of stuff like i'm not ready to go when i'm 70 god like you know talking about like 70 year olds that are in good health as well, that are just copying this disease and it's, you know, taking their life too soon. Um, so I just think everyone just needs to obviously eat a plant-based diet, stop exploiting animals, um, 
if you're in a situation at home where we got, we're having a war, there's, sorry, while I'm talking, there's a war in the comment section of people putting steak and then people putting vegetables, you know, the emojis, the old steak emojis. I've got, I've got people putting steak emojis in here and then the vegans are responding back, battling with the, the salad emoji. Yeah, you know, salad never killed no one. Salad never killed no one. You know, only the only disease you get from salad is when it's cross-contaminated with feces from animals. <laughs> Animal exploitation industry. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, that, that's my thoughts on it. That's the precautions I'm taking. That's my... I think we can start to... Unless we want to take one more caller in. Let's take another caller here. Maybe this person's from Italy. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Whereabouts are you? Are you in Australia? No, I'm in the UK. You're in the UK. I actually can't. It's, I love your stuff so much. Oh, that's nice. That's nice to know. And how are you going with all the craziness that's happening right now? Um, just, just trying, really. I guess. Um, no, I don't really know to be honest. Are you going to school? Do you go to school or do you go to work? Yeah, I'm down now. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. And are you staying with family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then are they able to work at the moment? Um, kind of. It's just, you know, I don't know really that, like how to explain it. It's just, no, it's just kind of taken over. Yeah. But, yeah. So. And is everyone wor- Is everyone a little bit worried about what the future holds for them and all that type of thing? Yeah, I think people are worried about school and everything because obviously it's taken such a big effect on people. People yeah. can't go to school. I'd be loving it. If that was me... Back in the days, we didn't have to go to school. I'd be like, woohoo! I only went to school for a couple of years, so yeah. High school. No, yeah. People are excited to be off school, but then people are worried as well because of how long we'll be off. And yeah. Like. Well, they were saying something about this could be happening for about 12 months here. Like, that's one of the things I heard. Did you hear that? I, yeah, I heard about that. I'm, I don't really know what to say about yeah. it. I, I just think... I don't know, I feel like there's not much that you can do with it. Yeah. Obviously, it's spreading so fast. You can't do, like, so much. And Yeah. yeah I don't take over, but I guess it's going to happen. So. Yeah. How long have you been a vegan for? Um, Since June last year, but I've been vegetarian my whole life. So. Oh, cool. And is your family vegetarian? My mum's vegan. Um, my dad's turned vegetarian last year, and we're currently trying to get him to go vegan. Oh, cool. So maybe you'll have... You have more time at home with him to chip away. Yeah, he d- he eats vegan at home and everything. So that are here. So. Ah, well, that's good. So if you quarantine, then he has to eat vegan at home. Yeah, <laughs> I was in <laughs> my mum a few weeks ago, and you know, you know, you do when you have the screens of like the animal abuse and stuff. Yeah. Um, us and we saw that, and I was like, oh my god, mum, Joey's gonna be here, and I was so excited, and then. Um, <laughs> Like, you weren't there and everything, but I was talking to one of the, like, activists, and um, they were like, oh, can I explain what's going on? Me and my mum were like, oh, no, we know what's going on and everything. And then I was like, is Joey here? And he was like, no, but I was like, oh, that's a shame, but at least it's still going on. So- yeah, I don't attend every cube on Earth at the same time, but um, <laughs> I, it's good that I think the, like I said, I'm not doing any public activism at the moment. Uh, I'm going to be doing my activism online. And I think that's a safer decision right now just till we know what's what's going on. Thank you so much for joining in and I hope everything goes good with your your quarantining and your keeping safe. Thank you. All right, take care. Okay, we, well, thank you so much for tuning in. We had a very large stream today, very large live stream and for the podcast here. Thank you everyone for the pod, in the podcast world, in the YouTube world, in the podcast world for tuning in as well. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave comments down below. What are you doing about this coronavirus stuff? What do you think about it all? You know, if you want to send me an email about something that I might not know, or Joey, no, this is a conspiracy. You don't know what you're talking about. Or Joey, no, you don't know what... I don't know. People send me stuff all the time. Like I said, I'm not claiming to be an expert on zoonotic diseases or epidemics or pandemics um, or government conspiracies or anything like that 
I personally think that this is something we should take seriously. I'm going to look to the experts and see what they're saying. And I'm just going to say that this is a disease that come from animals. And now we've got a problem on our hands and we have to deal with it. And we have to take the necessary precautions. And I'm taking the precautions. I'm, I'm not being silly about it. I don't think um, one way thinking is good with this. I don't think we should think, oh, everything's going to be fine. This is just all bullshit. I don't think that's safe. And I don't think, oh, we're all going to die. This is an, is an apocalypse. Uh, you know, I don't think that's safe thinking either. Just stay rational. Uh, keep your you know, your eyes open, be careful what information you're taking in as well, just look to the experts and make sure that you're getting a good, you know, source of your information, these these media outlets, they like to sensationalize a little bit, but that doesn't mean things aren't happening, um, it looks really bad in Italy and it's really sad to see people burying, being buried without their families there and really horrible, so anyway, I hope this teaches humanity a lesson, Please, for F sakes, stop the animal exploitation, abuse and cruelty, these sick, disgusting factory farm, hellholes, slaughterhouses, uh, markets where they're eating dogs and cats and snakes and chickens and cows and pigs and bats and pangolins, little cute, adorable pangolins. You know, it doesn't matter if the animal is adorable or not. It's just cruelty and violence and it has to stop. And look at the planets like replenishing now that we're all, all, everything's come to a standstill. So human beings need to take a good, hard, solid look in the mirror, stop what we're doing for a sec, and just have a look at our hands, look at the blood that's on it. And you know, we need to start to collectively change the food system, get rid of this, this the, the animal-based food system, and start moving into a more ethical way of living all around the world. So let's do it. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace.